Civil rights icon and longtime Georgia Congressman John Lewis passed away Friday at the age of 80 after a six month long battle with cancer. He was one of the original freedom riders. He rose to become an important figure in American history for his decades of public service and for literally being on the front line in the war fighting for social justice. Joining us live from Washington this morning is Congresswoman Karen Bass, who represents the 27th Congressional District. That 37th, excuse me, Congressional District includes parts of Los Angeles, South LA, and Culver City. She's also the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Good morning, Congresswoman Bass. Thanks for being Good with us. Good morning. What an extraordinary life. What a great American, uh, Congressman Lewis. Tell us, how do you think Congressman Lewis would have wanted to be remembered? Oh, I have no question how he would have wanted to be remembered. Um, he wants the Voting Rights Act reauthorized. And we passed the legislation over 200 days ago out of the House of Representatives. It is in the Senate. And I have no doubt that he would like to see that signed by the president uh, as fast as possible. And I say that also because we're coming on an election in a little over 100 days. And we need to figure out how to have an election where people don't have to risk their lives. Mm. We should be able to vote from home. And so he would want to first see voting rights restored and then make sure that we have a safe election in November. Three decades in Congress, the conscience of the Congress. What did that mean? And what was it like for you to work with this giant? Well, you know, I'm in my 10th year here now in Washington. And when I first came into office, the idea that I would be able to serve alongside an icon like John Lewis, you know, I was a child when Martin Luther King was killed. Of course, I never had an opportunity to see or to meet him. And so to me, for my generation, it's like serving with, with Dr. King. Mm. Um, Mr. Lewis in this House and the Senate with Democrats and Republicans, without a doubt, is the most respected member. As a matter of fact, a few minutes ago, I was on the phone with the chair of the Democratic caucus, and we were talking about the tribute that we're going to do for Mr. Lewis on the floor. And typically, the Congressional Black Caucus does tributes like this. And we said, oh, no, this time the entire House of Representatives mm. has to do, we call it a special order hour. Because it's Mr. Lewis, it'll be special several hours uh, of tribute that we will do uh, either tomorrow evening or Wednesday evening. Mm. At the age of 23, and just think about how young, 23 years old, he spoke at the 1963 March on Washington, sharing a podium with his mentor, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights leaders. That was nearly 57 years ago. And then you think about today, the fact that our nation's still dealing with racial divide. What did Congressman Lewis think about the Black Lives Matter movement and what our country is going through right now? Well, you know, I think uh, what he thinks about Black Lives Matter is, is similar to me. Uh, it's another generation. And if you truly believe in fighting to make the United States a more perfect union, if you believe in fighting for social and economic justice and that defined his life, then you understand it's a relay race. And you understand that one of the most important things you can do in your lifetime is pass on the baton to the next generation. I wasn't with him when he went to Black Lives Matter Square, but I saw the pictures, I saw his eyes, and I know that he loved being there with the protesters and knowing that his days were coming to an end. I mean, he knew that, you know, he had a terminal diagnosis. And I can only imagine that Mr. Lewis was thinking that it's gonna be okay. Mm. It's gonna be okay because there's a new generation that's prepared. They are lifting the issue, but, th but they're making it bigger than policing. And now they're talking about systemic racism. They're talking about US history and correcting it. And, uh, and I, I think that he was at peace. You keep referring to Congressman Lewis as Mr. Lewis. And yes. I heard, I heard a, a, you tell a story this weekend on one of the national programs about calling him Mr. Lewis, and he didn't want to <laughs> be called Mr. Lewis. But I don't know if you want to share that memory or any other memory of, of Congressman Lewis, of your personal experience with him that you could share sure. with us. One of my best experiences with him was taking him to Community Coalition. You know, I, I formed Community Coalition. It's now its 30th anniversary. And uh, I took him there because I wanted him to meet two generations of young people who he had influenced. We, there were teenagers that were there. 
And there were members of the community coalition that started as teenagers that are now in their 40s, and they were there. So we had 40-somethings and, and teens. And I wanted them to have an opportunity to share with him what he meant to them, and specifically how they took the lessons of his life and are applying them to the work that they're doing today. And I just think now, of course, when I was there, we had no idea that he was, that his life was not gonna last much longer. This was a couple of years before his diagnosis. But I wanted to make sure that he heard, that he knew that at Community Coalition, the staff teach John Lewis. <laughs> they teach mm. about what he did. Mm. And, uh, and it's an African-American and Latino organization. And I wanted him to see how he had influenced them. Uh, he would often say to me, uh, Karen, please call me John. And, <laughs> To him repeatedly, no, Mr. Lewis, I'm never going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we so appreciate you being with us this morning. Uh, Congresswoman Bass, we, we uh, appreciate you sharing those stories. Yes. And thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.